Y'all seen me in this kitchen before. Y'all seen him in this kitchen before. Guess what happens? When we tag out early, it's deer meat for dinner time, boys. We are getting ready. We're gonna do very similar to what we've done in the past, but we're also gonna change it up a little bit. So, first things first, you got to get the silver skin off your tenderloins, off your back straps. If not, everybody's gonna have a miserable dining experience. So we're gonna get started on that first and foremost. Um, we're gonna go here, go there. Get me a starting point. I'm gonna get a little piece of paper towel. We're gonna go there. And we just go real. Uh oh. Okay, that's the, got all that grease on it. So we've been here seven years. I've always done it the same when I'm cooking for a crowd, but tonight I'm gonna make it like I'm cooking at my house. So that sausage is going in there, going inside that back strap, along with these along with some chopped maraschino cherries and some cream cheese. And then we're gonna wrap them in bacon and we'll finish them with honey when they come off. Your boy didn't get this size on accident. Let me just tell you right now, I knew full well what I was doing. I earned both these X's on this shirt. You hear me? Both of them. Mm. Man, that's good. We're gonna do it a little different. I don't need this bowl anymore. I mean, because my lovely assistant here showed me they got a mixer. This could be a game changer. I don't have no mixer. Are you kidding me? But what we're gonna do, we're gonna throw this cream cheese, all of it, all four things. We're gonna, we're gonna go here and go here. Get in there. And I have no idea my measurements on this. Miss Lisa asked me, she said, you don't measure anything, do you? I was like, no. Nah. <laughs> measurement? Measurements, that's, that's, that's for cheaters. Uh, you don't want to measure nothing. I'm just winging this, because A, this is the recipe I cook at home for me and my wife, so it's generally half a back strap for me and Brittany. And I know, I know that one how I want it. Today, we got eight halves of back straps. That's four, I know, I mean, like, if you're doing simple math, but it doesn't compute quite that way. So, I'm doing one tub, I generally do one at home for one half, so I thought, you know, do the math, that equals four. It's all good. So, we got that in there. Next, we're gonna just dump all of these, this whole jar, sliced banana peppers. They say medium heat, they're not, they have no heat like whatsoever they're just good so we're gonna do that i'm gonna look and see if there's any cores in here sometimes cores slip in you just take them out but also you you take your product a good product you look at cream cheese he's good then we're gonna dump his sausage in here now this sausage was just brown and it's been drained of as much grease as we could get out. There's still gonna be some, but that grease is healthy for you. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. It'll make you look like me. That's a good thing, I think. So then, to end it, we're just gonna, I took a whole jar of maraschino cherries and I sliced them. You can get like three slices off of each, but I sliced them into like threes, thirds, and we're just gonna Take them, dump them in here. It's gonna look like Christmas when we get done. You got red and green, and white and like, but that's fitting because hunting season's in Christmas time, right? So we're done with him. And then we're gonna go to that mixer. Now here's the problem. I don't know how to use that mixer. So we're gonna have to wait uh, on my assistant to get back. But look, you can do it with your hand. We're just gonna cheat and do it that way. But all you'll do is then go in here and just get to mixing. We're gonna do it with a mixer to get it more well blended because this is a lot of stuff. So I'm not used to quite making this big of a pile of stuff. And here's the other thing about this. If you get lucky and you've got this filling left over, like before you put it in the backstrap, 
all you're missing then from a good time is a box of wheat thins. Because you just go there and eat him, eat him, eat him. You keep eating him. Look at that. Rolling. I just way faster than my arm can go. That is way faster than my arm can go. No, 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 that's good. Oh, that's good right there. We don't want to beat it into oblivion. Now, we wrap. So this part takes a little while, so. This will most definitely be time lapse for all of y'all at home. Folks at home, folks at home. We're gonna take him. Oh, I'm telling you what. This is so good. We're gonna take that little blade right there and we're just gonna open him up. We're gonna butterfly him. We're gonna make sure, try to cut him as even as we can. It's a lot, but you don't wanna go all the way through. We're gonna lay him open and then we're gonna go here. We're just gonna make sure we get a little bit of everything. I see, I see cherries, I see peppers, I see, I know sausages in there. I'm just going to do that. Perhaps a little aggressive on the amount of filling for that little guy. But when you're cooking with this many people, I'm just trying to keep them small because they're a lot, a lot tougher to uh, make sure we don't overcook them. But if I keep them small, I can do it pretty easy. And then we're going to wrap. This is the only time you'll ever hear me say this, the cheapest, thinnest bacon you can find. Otherwise, that would be bacon sacrilege. Go here. Go here. So that's what I'm worried about. We're going to, I overfilled him, so. We'll lose some of him, charge it to the game whenever he starts getting hot, because that stuff will bubble out of him. But that's fine. Part of it. All right. Now we're going to add them onto the grill. This bee is a gas grill. It's not my, pre oh, look at that. Happy accident. Hmm. It's not my preferred method of cooking, but that's what we got. So we got it on like a medium, medium low heat. It, it was hot when I got out here. So it was like 500 degrees. I don't want to. I want to cook it hot, but I don't want to cook it that hot. That's how you, uh, that's how you start a grease fire when you're cooking with bacon. Then we're going to put the tenderloins up on this top rack and just kind of let them smoke over the top of the uh, actual back straps. And we're going to pull them when they get good and medium rare, something like that. But we'll just slice them whole. But they'll sit there and get kind of a almost an applewood smoke because of the, uh, the applewood bacon. So they'll be fantastic. You don't want to ever put them on like super direct heat. You'll be a good way to foul up a perfectly good piece of meat. Now we're going to let them take a little nap. So Jeff, who is the proprietor, of 7J, got drawn for a, a once in a lifetime tag, right, pretty, basically? Pretty much as long as it takes to draw it, how many years, and and then I'll never draw another one again. So it's yeah. been it's been a lifetime dream to go hunt a sheep. So. Yeah. So he went and got him a bighorn sheep up in the mountains. And for those of y'all that don't know, that sheep head, what that thing weigh, 30 pounds, 40 pounds? I think it's heavy. Thing, yeah. Like a sack of corn back home, say 40 or 50 pounds, I mean, that's a cool animal. And hey, didn't nobody deserve it more than you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Didn't That's nobody right. deserve it. Oh man. And now we're gonna go ahead and start finishing some of these because they're done. We're gonna finish it with a little honey. Get a little glaze. Look at that. That doesn't suck. He looks to be close. He looks to be close. Look at all that stuffing coming out of him. We're gonna, we're gonna have to hurry on some of this. Well, that honey will just make a nice little glaze on it. Trust me, that's worth doubling a broadhead. 
Look at there. She is done. Now we're waiting on is everybody get to camp. Word on the street is somebody got them one tonight.